Good morning and welcome to worship here at the Bloomer United Methodist Church. How is everybody doing? Well, you're looking good and I am excited for our time um, to be together and to worship. Um, for those of you that are joining us online, we welcome you and you're glad that you are here. Um, as always, we encourage you to engage with us throughout the course of the service. If you have some prayer requests or things that you would like to share, we have people that can, can be available to pray with you. And um, you know, if there's some way that we can come alongside of you and support you, we would love to be able to do that um, this morning. So friends, as we prepare to enter into this worship time, I'm going to invite us, as I normally do, to just calm ourselves, to cast off all of the distractions that seem to be going on all around us, and let us just center ourselves um, in the presence of Jesus Christ and just allow the Holy Spirit to move and guide our hearts this morning. Lord, quiet our minds, open our hearts, center us in your presence. Let your peace fill this space as we seek your guidance and your truth. May our thoughts, words, and actions align with your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, let us join together in our opening song. We're going to um, do Battle Hymn of the Republic, and the words will be on the screen. I'm going to invite you to stand if you can comfortably do so this morning. Friends, let us pray. Dear gracious and loving God, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have gifted us with. Lord, for the sunshine on our face, for the cool breeze that brushes our cheeks. And Lord, we thank you that you have drawn us to this place this morning, that we can be the body of Christ, that we can come and that we can worship and honor and glorify you, and that we can grow deeper in relationship with each other. Lord, we ask that you, again, that your Holy Spirit would open our hearts, ears, and minds to hear your truth, to understand your wisdom, and then to go forth through those doors and go out and live in a way that is a reflection of you. Lord, we ask all of this in your Son, Jesus' name, amen. My friends, you may be seated this morning. All right, so I've got some announcements for you today. It's kind of a full day, so I'm going to try to go through them um, as quick as I can. But obviously, there's the list of the online resources that are available to and for you. If you're ever not able to be here in person, you can always watch a live stream of the service at this 10.30 time. 
or you can watch a recorded version of the service at your leisure on the YouTube app. Um, we also have some social media applications where we post um, pictures and videos and fun things of that, uh, that are going on in the life and ministry of the church. And if you want to participate in those, you are always welcome. And we also offer you some devotional and, and encouraging materials throughout your week um, to help you continue to grow in your faith, and we encourage you to utilize those. All right. Well, friends, if you have your announcement sheets, you'll see that there's a bunch of stuff coming up. Um, there are a couple of the things that I want to mention. Um, we do have Plarn Weaving here again this, this coming week. And just as a heads up, this is the last week that we're going to be doing that for a little bit. Um, and friends, it's been exciting um, to, to watch this, this little mission and ministry grow in our church. You know, it was just one little seed idea that somebody had and said, hey, what do you think about doing this? And we've gone on to, to see lots of people coming together around that, um, that mission and that ministry. And friends, even I can do it, right? So I came and the ladies were very gracious to me. Well, they might have been cutting five, six bags at a time. They were like, Josh, just do one at a time, don't, you know, just make sure you do it right because I'm not a very crafty person. And, and so if even I can do it, then all of you can do it too. So if you've got some time to come and experience um, that ministry um, before we send the loom away to someplace else, um, we invite you to come and, and to do that. It, it, it is a, a lot of fun and they do a good job with that. Um, beginning Thursday, September 26, from 6 to 7.30, um, we're going to be, be beginning uh, Untangling Faith. It's a women's Bible study that is starting up, and this is one of the follow-up steps from the women's conference earlier this summer. Um, and so if you went to the women's conference and you want to take this next step, I really encourage you to do that. Now, I don't believe that you have to have gone to the conference to come and to be a part of it. So ladies, you know, please know that if you didn't go to the, the women's conference, please, if you feel, feel it on your heart to, to come to that study, by all means, know that you are welcome and invited. Okay, perfect. So please know that. So again, please just feel free to come. You don't have to have um, the book to even begin, and we will make sure you have the resources that you need. Um, friends, next Sunday, um, just a reminder that we will be doing a picnic in the park up in New Auburn at the Pavilion in the Park in New Auburn. This is a joint or a combined service with our sister church, New Auburn. And so please know that that service will be at 10 a.m., up there. So if you come here at 1030 and the doors are not open, you'll know why and hopefully you'll scramble up and at least be able to join us for the other half of the service and some food. So, um, but just mark that down on your calendar. We're asking everyone to just bring a dish to pass um, and we're going we're gonna to have a, a fun time kind of ending out our summer and moving into fall with our, our picnic. Now friends, the last thing I have this morning is I need your help, okay? Michelle asked me to put this out for you. So we are in need of another driver for our Kidzillion program. We don't have enough seats and cars. So we have a very good problem to solve. So if you have availability in your schedule and you would be willing to drive some kids from the elementary school to church on Wednesdays, we need someone with a vehicle that has three to four seats for us. Um, would you please let Michelle or I know right away because we need to make sure we can get all of our kiddos to the Kidzillion program um, and just please know that that will be very easy. So school gets out at um, 3 o'clock um, and so if you can be to the school about 5 minutes to 3, um, that would be great and generally we have the kids all go to a certain location and point and we... We, we pick them up and then we transport them back here. So if you'd be willing to do that, that would be really helpful. We need a... No, 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 no. That's a parent's responsibility. The, the, main, the main thing is that we pick the kids up from school. We bring them to the church just, just because the busing system takes a long time to go from the elementary school over to the high school. And so if we can get the kids from the elementary school and just get them right over to church, we're able to start on time and able to spend more time with them. 
So, yeah, just the, just the five-minute transport from the elementary school to the church. All right. Okay, so if you're part of POW, please, please know that that will be rescheduled. And then I do believe that um, we're also going to be doing the Bible reading cover to cover again. And so I'm going to invite Sarah to come and share with us again as we continue on that, that mission and ministry, and she'll share some information with you. Is this on? Whose life is perfect right now? Doesn't need any help. Raise your hand. Nobody needs any. Okay. So God tells us, get in the word. All the answers are in the word. And so there is another year starting of reading the Bible cover to cover. Let me know if that is something that God has placed on your heart because I'll get you connected. Um, it's really easy. You can choose to do it by yourself, meaning you know, go through your actual hardcover book of the Bible and do that. Um, there's a reading plan that comes that you get text every week. Um, if that, if your life is a little more busy, there's an app where you can actually watch someone else read it to you. They are trying to do this to make people get further in reading the word. So, you know, some people start and they don't finish, but it's further than they ever got before. And so that's the encouragement that if we... We're kind of living in some very interesting times out in the world, in our own, our own church, in our own personal lives, and having the Word of God in us, in our minds, in our hearts, and coming out of our mouth is very, very powerful. So it's always been important, but I really do encourage anybody that feels led to do it again, and if you are being led to do it again, I'm going to encourage you to grab someone to take with, because we're called to be disciples. Number two, if it's your first time and God's leading you, great. And I know that a, quite a few of the ladies that did it before had a lot of objections. I don't have the time. I don't have this. I'm not good at that. I can't read those big words and big names in the, in the Old Testament. I promise you, you say yes to God. When he tells you to say yes, he's going he's gonna to get you through. So um, let me know if that's something that you have any interest in, and I can get you some additional information for that. So, all right. Thank you for that. So, whew, hopefully, we got through that whirlwind of announcements for everybody, and you're able to to decipher and make sure that you can be a part of those different things, friends. As we continue on this morning, I am going to invite a, invite our young disciples to come on up, and um, we're going to have a little bit of time to discuss something. All right. How are you all doing this morning? Good. Is school treating you well? Yeah. No? Yeah. All right. At least we've got, we've got a mix, right? I know some people are being honest. And I'm glad that for those of you that school's going well, I'm excited for you for that. So how many of you have ever heard of something called peer pressure? Anybody know what that is? What is peer pressure? Right? Generally, when we think of peer pressure, we think of our friends or the kids at school asking us or trying to get us to do things that we know we probably shouldn't do. Right? Okay? Hey, Cashton, why don't you go up and take the apple off the teacher's desk? Or, hey, why don't you, why don't you go over on the other side of the playground even though the teacher told you not to do that? Or maybe, hey, we're going to go do this thing and we want you to come along and you know in your heart that's probably not a very good thing to do. Anybody ever have that happen? All right. So guess what? It's going to happen your whole life. Okay? Because even as adults, we all have to deal with peer pressure. Okay? Now... To be fair, there are times when our friends can put pressure on us to do good things too, right? So you guys can put peer pressure on each other and say, hey, Thaddeus, 
Why don't you come to Sunday school with us this morning, even though you don't really want to, right? Or, hey, we're going to go on, a, on a, a trip for youth group. Why don't you come with us, right? So we can put peer pressure on each other in a positive way too, but most of the time it seems like we think of it in a neg- negative context, okay? So what do we do in those times when our friends ask us or try to get us to do things that we know aren't right to do? Huh? Nobody knows? So what happens when one of your friends asks you to do something you're not supposed to do? Don't do it. Okay. Is, it, is that always an easy thing to tell your friends? No, right? Sometimes that can be really hard, right? Because sometimes our friends will start to make fun of us. Sometimes maybe they'll, they'll tell us we can't be part of the friends or do do other fun things that they're doing because we're saying no, okay? But when we stand up for what's right and we we make sure that we're making decisions based on how Jesus wants us to make decisions, guess what? We, We find out that we get to do some pretty cool things. So... I want, I want to share this verse with you. So in one of the letters to the churches, the Apostle Paul writes a, a scripture verse, and it says, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, okay? So being, can, being conformed to the patterns of this world are kind of like just going along with all of the things your friends tell you to do, even when they're not good, right? Okay? But to be transformed in your mind by the renewing of your mind means that you're continually thinking about the things that Jesus is doing in your heart and in your mind. And that means we have to be spending time in prayer. It means we have to be reading our our Bibles. It means that we need to be hanging out and coming to church and going to Kidzillion and youth group and doing other fun things. Okay? And as we do that more and more, the transformation that Jesus taught or that Paul talks about in that is Jesus working from the inside out. Have you ever thought about that? You get how many of you are aware of Superman, right? You know this the, you know underneath he always wears like a suit of clothes, but underneath his clothes all of a sudden there's the big S, right? That's kind of the way Jesus works in us is that he works from the inside out and then the, the more we grow in our faith and the more we grow as Jesus' disciples, the more and more we get transformed to, to be the people that he desires us to be, okay? And then we go from having to deal with the peer pressure of the world and what our friends want us to do to hopefully being able to encourage them to do things differently, right? Does that make sense? Okay. So I want you to think about that. Next time your friend comes up and and you see maybe some of your friends teasing somebody else at school, maybe you can stand up for that person and not just sit there and laugh laugh along, right? Or again, maybe when that friend tells you to go do that thing you're not supposed to do, you can say, no, I'm not really interested in doing that. I don't think that that's that's a healthy thing for me, and I wouldn't recommend that you do that either because you're probably just going to get in trouble, okay? So let's go do this instead. All right? Let me pray for you guys today, and I want you to think about this week. How can you keep being transformed by the love and grace of Jesus as you grow as disciples? Okay, you ready? Fold your hands, bow your heads. Dear Jesus, we just thank you so much for our young disciples, and Lord, we know how tough it can be sometimes to be in school, and and we also know how important our friends are, and And we know the pressures that they put on us, and sometimes they try to encourage us and lead us to do things that we know we shouldn't do. But Lord, we just we just continue to grow in our faith that you are the rock and foundation of our life. And Lord, we just ask that these young disciples continue to learn and to grow and to renew their mind by spending time in prayer, by reading their scriptures, and being here at church. Lord, that they would be able to influence. The, the culture and the world in a positive way, that they would be a light to their friends at school and the people that they interact with. So Lord, guide them and bless them in everything that they do this week. In Jesus' name, amen.
All right, give me a high five or something as you go by. Thank you. Ooh, a foot five. Awesome. All right. Friends, at this time, I'm going to invite us to join together in our tithes and our offerings. And if I can get a couple of our young disciples to come back up and to help me, that would be wonderful. All right, friends, I invite you to stand if you can comfortably do so as we sing our doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings Gracious God, we thank you for these tithes and these offerings, and we thank you for the opportunity to give back out of the abundance that you have given us. So Lord, we ask your blessing upon these offerings that they would go to um, carry your gospel message throughout this community and into the world, and that they would go to serve those people that are in need. Lord, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name, amen. Friends, you may be seated once again. Well, friends, I am going to change things up just a little bit today um, because I I want us to to take a a little bit deeper look at another aspect of of evangelism. And so if you're just joining us for the first time or you've maybe missed a week along the way, we've been going through a series called Go Make Disciples, and we've been looking at what it means for us to share the gospel message with other people. And so the first couple weeks of our series... We spent time looking at the why behind why we do evangelism. And now, in these last couple of weeks, we've begun to shift to um, the what. What is it that we do when we do evangelism? And today, friends, we're going to begin to shift into, okay, how do we do it? Okay? So, just want you to, to be aware of that. But I've got a question for you to start off this morning. And that is, how many of you like to people watch? Right? It's kind of a really fun activity because as people that I have heard, they put it so eloquently, we're pretty fascinating creatures. Right? It's always interesting when you people watch what you might just happen to see. All right? Now, again, sometimes people make us laugh. Sometimes, if you're like me, you start to shake your head and go, what in the world is going on there? But now I want you to take a moment, and I also want you to think about this question. How many of you perceive that people are watching you? Okay, because there are other people who like to people watch, right? Now, friends, interestingly enough, and I would probably be a fairly rich person if I had a dollar for every time my mother told me, Joshua, your actions speak louder than words. But friends, we're going to kind of think about today what it means to live out our Christian witness and how that affects the evangelism work that we do. Because unfortunately, sometimes, despite our best efforts or despite the things that we say, our actions and our lifestyles don't always match up with the words that come out of our mouths. In fact, this is what led led Brennan Brennan Manning, who was a, a Roman Catholic priest, to say the greatest single cause of atheism in the world today is Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips 
and walk out the door and deny Him by their lifestyle. This is what an unbelieving world simply finds unbelievable. Okay, now friends, that quote, you probably heard me say that quote many times here because to me that just is a constant reminder that the things we do are a major reflection of how Jesus shows up in our life, right? And if we are going to be um, going out and working to evangelize people, to try to share the gospel message with people, we also have to understand that the things we say and the way that we live might be much more of a testimony than us walking up to a person and trying to tell them certain things, all right? So I want us to think deeply this morning about the way that we live. So let me share a not-so-flattering story about my family this past week. So it started out just like any normal day, so to speak, but then all of a sudden it just seemed like chaos just erupted within our house. The boys start tussling with each other and fighting They've been asked to do something, and they don't do it, and then pretty soon dad starts yelling and saying, why aren't you listening the first time? And then the kids start yelling back why they're not doing that. My daughter is just in another world. She's not even close to ready to go to school, or no hairbrush, no shoes on. Well, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm still eating. I'm doing this. And I'm pretty sure that if a passerby walked across the sidewalk in front of the parsonage that morning, they would have gone, what in the world is going on in that house? Okay? Now, I'm making it sound pretty humorous, but it really wasn't that humorous in the moment. Okay? Because I was a little elevated, and I was really kind of belting it out. All right? But I also watched... As I dropped my kids off at school that day, these young, pretty spunky, positive kids walk into school with their heads down and their shoulders sagged because of that experience. And I thought, huh, what a great way to start our day. And like I said, what would people think if they just happened to be witnessing our family life in that moment? Now, friends, thank God for grace, right? Thank God that God does not call us to be perfect. But God does call us to be humble and obedient. And so I had to go home, and I really had to eat some humble pie. And I had to go and fall on my knees and spend some time in repentance and say, God, this morning didn't really look like I intended it to look. And you need to forgive me for not being the father that you called me to be in this moment. And I had to also come back, again, not always easy for parents, and when my kids got back in the car, say, hey, I'm really sorry for the way that I showed up this morning when you went to school, and I'm sorry for my part in setting you off on a day, because you probably didn't have that great a time at school if you weren't able to adjust and adapt. But friends, we are called to be the salt and light in this world that we live in. And if we're going to do that, the way we live, the words we speak, the thoughts we think, and the actions we take need to be a reflection of the one that we claim to serve. Now again, we won't always do that perfectly. But our goal is that when people look at us, they might see a flawed individual, but they also see Jesus. And they see Jesus at work in our lives. So friends, as we continue on in this series, I want to share with you a verse that will be very familiar to most of you from Matthew chapter 5, um, verses 13 to 16. So Jesus here says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do you put light or no, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they might see your good deeds and glorify 
your Father in heaven. And so, friends, evangelism is not simply an act of speaking the gospel, right? Rather, it's this holistic embodiment of our entire being. It's our thoughts. It's our words. It's our actions. Now, friends, as we get into this, I do want us to consider just for a moment the differentiation between Christian witness and evangelism. Okay, so last week I gave you what I thought were the four or four and a half most important fundamental concepts when it came to evangelism in the gospel. Anybody remember at least one of them? Oh my gosh, I failed. I can see I'll have to get some placards made. So number one, Jesus came down to earth because of his love for us. Point 1.5 is that Jesus showed us how to live the good life here and now and to live in the kingdom. Point two is that Jesus went to the cross to forgive us because we were sinners and there was nothing that we could do to earn our own forgiveness and make ourselves right with God. And three, in his resurrection, we have hope and assurance of being in the presence of God right now and into eternity. And those are the the most fundamental concepts or fundamental pieces of what need to be shared when we do evangelism with other people. Now last week we also talked about how we kind of wrap our testimony of what Jesus has done in our life, who we were before Jesus, what happened when we, we invited Jesus to be our Lord and Savior, and what happened as a result of that relationship, how our lives have been changed and transformed. I don't even know if I want to ask this, but how many of you actually did your homework and wrote down part of your testimony last week? Oh my gosh. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to put it back on the table, friends. (laughs) You did? Good. All right. So friends, as I told our young disciples... The Apostle Paul tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Do not conform to the patterns of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right? Our journey with evangelism begins with the inner life. See, oftentimes when we hear these words, we understand that there's a change, right? That, well, to conform to something means to be changed, to transform into something means to be changed. But in this biblical concept, what Paul is saying is that to be conformed means the world is putting pressure, trying to change and condition you to the patterns, to the, to the values, to the things that they think are most important. Right, And what happens then is that this becomes an external change where we say, okay, well, I'm just going to do what they tell me to do. Okay, The world tells me I should think this, I should talk like this, I should dress like this, I should act like this. Okay, I guess maybe those are the things that I should do. But, this, but Jesus tells us, or Paul tells us in this case, Don't do that. Don't be conformed by those patterns of the world, but be transformed. And friends, that transformation begins in the internal part of our being, right? It's God working in and through us, and eventually it just begins to radiate and flow out of us. And so as we go back to that scripture out of the Gospel of Matthew, right, what's the purpose of salt? What's the purpose of light? The purpose of salt is to add flavor, right? It's to preserve. And so we are called to flavor the culture, not allow the culture to constantly move over us. We're called to be light into the culture, right? Not just to assume or to take on all of the things that the culture speaks to us. Now, friends, I do want to speak really important here because many times there seems to be this real real kind of division or conflict in the church when it comes to how we engage the culture, right? And there are those people on one end of the spectrum who say, you know what, we're just, we're just to, to, we're part of the culture and we need to embrace that and to live into it. You have people on the other end of the spectrum who, are, who, who take this position that, that we need to be at war with the culture, okay? I don't necessarily think either of those extreme positions are helpful, 
okay? Because on the one hand, our culture does do some good and beautiful things, right? And, and we can live into that. And there are also some negative things. And so we're called to push back against some of those things to add flavor, right? To show our culture that, look, this is what life looks like in the kingdom. And we share that light, that light that radiates out into the dark places in our culture and calls people back home. Because that was Jesus' ministry in a nutshell, right? Jesus went out and interacted with people in every single stratosphere and group that there was. But the thing about Jesus' ministry is that Jesus never changed. The people had the choice whether they were going to choose to change or not, right? Think about every single time Jesus encounters someone. He goes and he sits and he eats with them and he talks with them and they come back different or they choose to walk away from Jesus, okay? Jesus doesn't change in who he is. Again, our scriptures in other places say Jesus is the same today or same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, friends, what does it mean when we again think about our thinking? Because oftentimes the things that we think eventually manifest themselves in the way that we talk and in the way that we act. All right? And so, friends, when we go out and we look to, to be a Christian witness and we look to do evangelism, are we allowing the truth of the gospel to shape the way we think? Right? Again, are we going out with that same love that Jesus had for each and every person? Do we see the sacred worth of each person and say, you know what? Jesus came for you, and he came for you, and he came for you just as he came for me. And Jesus shows you what life can look like as you live in his kingdom, the same way that Jesus is showing me what it looks like to live in the kingdom. And I don't do everything perfectly, and Jesus doesn't expect you to do everything perfectly. But he does expect you to continue to allow him to work in your life, to mold you and transform you more and more into the image of who he is. Friends, when we think about our thoughts, are we meditating on the things that we know are true, noble, right, and pure? Again, are we spending time meditating on the Scriptures? You know, friends, I, I have never been someone that has... I've always appreciated the Psalms. I've never really loved them. But I don't know what it's been the last half a year. I have just found myself going back to those psalms and reading those and meditating on those. And the more and more that I do that, I just can tangibly feel changes in me as I, again, remember who God is and remember what God does for me. And I turn those into prayers. Now, friends, again, our thoughts affect our words and our actions. So let's move on and let's talk about the words that we speak. Matthew 12, 34 says, Out of the abundance of the heart, so the mouth speaks. And so, friends, our words are an overflow, again, of what's in our hearts and minds. And so when we speak and interact with other people, are we speaking life and hope into people? Or are we speaking death and negativity into people? Friends, this is something we spend a lot of time with in our family, right? And it's amazing to me, again, sometimes given that situation, I sure didn't speak life into my kids that morning, right? But it's amazing to me, I think, how desensitized at least I have become and maybe some of you have become to the amount of negativity and in, in, um, divisive things that get spoken within our culture, Right, So, a few months ago when we had a presidential debate when Joe Biden was still in, the, um, in position to run for re-election, I was sitting there and I don't normally pay attention to the debates or to the, the media, but I just happened to catch a little bit of the end of the debate and all of a sudden Trajan came up and he jumped on the bed and he started to listen to it and he wasn't even there for 30 seconds and he goes, Dad, all they do is talk negative. All they do is talk about how bad the other person is. 
30 seconds, folks, is all it took him to realize that. Because again, we've talked about how important the words that we speak are. And friends, I, it made me again look and go, wow, I'm pretty desensitized because I just think that's normal these days. That doesn't seem like it's a big deal. But there used to be a time, not all that long in the past, where people came across the aisle and even if they disagreed, there was still respect for the people that thought and, and had different policies than the other. And so friends, again, I ask you, what are the words that you're speaking are they adding value to people? Are they offering life and encouragement or are they tearing people down? Because people are going to hear those words and in the way that you treat them, in the language that comes out of your mouth, how are they going to be receptive to the actual gospel message if all they hear come out of your mouth is the negativity, the things that tear down? Because the gospel is about something that builds up that transforms. So friends, we need to be very intentional about the way in which we speak. It also requires for us to have a spirit of humility and humbleness to make sure that even though we might have very strong positions on things, we make sure that again, we're operating out of mutual respect and compassion for other people. And finally, friends, do our actions line up with the things that we say and confess about our Christian faith? Right? James 1, chapter 22 says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Right? Don't, take, don't sit here and listen in church and go, well, Josh, or Pastor Josh said this, Pastor Josh taught this, I know this out of the Scriptures, blah, 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 and then turn around and walk out the door just as Brennan Manning says and, and have your lifestyle look completely different from what you've professed and thought about in here. Because that, friends, is what the world simply finds unbelievable. Now again, friends, I want to be very clear that we are not perfect people. That God's grace is sufficient for us. We are on a process of sanctification, of growing as disciples of Jesus Christ. And that's the important thing. That's one of the things, friends, because as if you've been following our, our devotions as I've gone through the Gospel of Mark, right? It's been very important. The, the author of the Gospel of Mark has really highlighted the importance of hearing the Word, Right? And so once we hear it, are we living it out? And one of the things that I love about the Gospels is that those disciples, whether it's the author portraying them that way or whether that's really the actual way that they are, they're pretty flawed people, right? Even as they sat in Jesus' presence, they didn't get it, right? They weren't expected to be perfect but they were expected to grow and to change. And so friends, if we're going to continue to live out our mission to make disciples, we need to remember that we first are called to be disciples. Right? That we get to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to the things that Jesus tells us and then to go out and live and practice and do the things that Jesus called us to do. And as we do that, we might be pleasantly surprised that people look around and go, you know what? This world seems like a crazy place right now, but there's something different about these people. There's something different in the way that they speak. There's something different in the way that they live, and I want to know more about that. I want to know more about Jesus. Because they are adding flavor, they're adding value to people around them. They're living in a way that's different, and I see light, and I see hope, I see love, I see respect, in them, and I want a piece of that. So friends, as I conclude today, let us remember that our Christian witness and evangelism are a holistic calling. It involves, while well, sharing the gospel message, those three or four fundamentals is really important, it needs to also be encapsulated in how we think, speak, and live. So friends, as you leave this place today, I ask that you commit to living out the gospel in a way that transforms not only our lives, but also the lives of all of the people around us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Friends, at this time, I'm going to invite us to um, enter into a time of prayer. And so I ask if there are any um, things that you would like to lift up as prayer requests or any joys that you would like to share this morning. Trajan. Hey, we're going on a camping trip in a little bit. Hey, anything else this morning? Desmond. That it's fall. Hey, Amen. I have to say, I'm kind of liking these temperatures. They feel pretty good. There you go. Okay, I'll come back to you if you remember, okay? Sarah. My business launches this week, so prayers for that week. Okay, so Sarah, a business launch this week. Kim. Prayers for a friend of mine. So prayers for friend or for friend Kim's friend Sue as she finishes up her chemo treatments and just for an easement and uh, of pain and that she would be in comfort. Jess. So continued prayers for Jess's sister after kind of an emergency surgery. We just thank God that everything went well, that it went, that the surgery was able to be completed and that she's at home recovering. So we'll pray for that. What do you got, Muriel? Yep, and that's a good prayer that we would be kind to others. Amen. Debbie. So prayers for a young girl named Alexa who's having some health challenges, just prayers that the doctors can figure out what's going on with her and that she can also have peace and comfort as she looks to get better. You got one more? Yes. Okay, yes. Be thankful for the, be thankful and say thank you to the people that, that help us out in our lives. Aaron. Okay. And I and I seem seem to have heard that that care is twenty nine, right? Twenty nine forever. Bill. Yes. Uh, prayer for my grandniece who will get married this Saturday down in Chippewa Falls. That'll be a second marriage for her. I had her first marriage over 16 years ago, and so that's kind of interesting. Okay. Well, prayers for that as they look to get married and a blessing upon upon that relationship. Marianne. The joy that Emily's new over wanted me to share is that she got her apartment and she got her cat got, uh, identified as a therapy cat, and she's getting her apartment set up, and she's starting the panelists. Awesome. So we're glad to see things working out for her. She had the few bumps in the road over the summer. So praise God that she has seen that breakthrough. Friends, I've got a couple other things that I would just like to mention. Um, the first one is for Michelle. She's not with us today. Her dad um, is in the hospital with pneumonia. So just she's had a long road with trying to care for, for family. So prayers for Michelle, but also prayers for her dad um, that he will heal up and recover. And then friends, obviously, you know, this has been kind of a tough week with regard to accidents. And so earlier this week, um, there was an, an orchard accident in which a number of really young four or five K kids were hurt as a 
um, wagon tipped over, and then also here in town this past week, there was an accident in which a, a car hit a tractor and sent the driver of the tractor um, into the road. And unfortunately, it's my understanding that the person in the tractor was also one of the brothers of the kids that was hurt in the other accident. So that family has kind of gotten a double dose of, of pain and um, just things blowing up in their lives. So let us just pray for the healing of all of those people involved. And just, again, I just ask that God's peace and comfort would just rain down on them. And I pray that our communities will come around and support those families um, as they go through this difficult situation. Friends, let us take these things and anything else that may be on your heart and mind and in a moment of silent prayer this morning. Almighty and loving God, we just thank you for the transformational work that you desire to do in each and every one of us. Lord, we just ask that we would open ourselves to that great work that you are doing. And Lord, that we would be changed from the inside out. And as that change occurs, that we would just radiate your light and your blessing to the people and to the communities and into the places with which we go. Lord, continue to help us to be intentional and mindful about the thoughts that we think, the words that we speak, and the decisions and the actions that we make, because we never know who might be watching, and we might never know how, how that interaction opens the door or closes it for our availability to, to share the gospel message with them. Lord, this day you have heard the many requests of this church. And so, Lord, we thank you and praise you for the good things in our lives, for birthdays, for upcoming vacations, for success of getting a, a new apartment and having things approved. And, Lord, we also lift up um, the things in our lives that, that seem difficult. And so, Lord, we... We just ask that you come around those people that are struggling, whether it be with circumstances in their lives or whether it be from things like health challenges. And Lord, in those instances, we just pray for your healing power to flow over and upon each and every person. Lord, we pray also that your peace would just manifest itself, that people, even in the midst of these, these devastating things, would know that you are always there. And that you, are, you will never, ever leave them. Lord, we ask all of these things in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, at this time... Sit down, hon. Almost. Friends, at this time, we are going to join together in the sacrament of Holy Communion. And I want you to know, as I prepare this, that everyone here is welcome to join us. We have an open table in the United Methodist Church, and so anyone that would like to participate in this sacrament with us is welcome to do so. We also honor your decision if you choose not to do that. 
Friends, if you would like to follow along with the liturgy, most of it will be on the screen, or you can turn in your hymnals to page 12. So, friends, Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all of the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water in the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to you, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Friends, will you pray our Lord's Prayer with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, can I have a couple of our young disciples come up and help me with the elements, please?
Well, I am passing this out. I also forgot to mention during the announcements that if you are worshiping with us online, you are welcome to take this with us. So if you want to take a couple of seconds and prepare the elements, um, please know that you are welcome at this table. Friends, the table has been prepared. Please come. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for you. Friends, I'm going to invite us to conclude our service this morning um, with a song, Jesus Loves Me. It is number 191 in your hymnal. We will sing verses 1 and 3. I invite you to stand if you can comfortably do so, and I will turn it over to Karen to lead us in this song. My friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Go now and share the gospel through the way that you live. God bless and amen. Just a reminder, picnic in the park next week in New Auburn, and we do have some goodies in the back. If you want to stay for a cup of coffee and a conversation, you are welcome. If not, have a blessed rest of your day. Bye-bye.